Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another establishment of Autodesk Virtual Academy. I think I meant to say installment there, but that's okay. This will be a good one regardless. Uh, the date is July 22nd, 2021, and we got quite a session here today. Um, with us here today, we got Jason Cordemanch, application engineer extraordinaire. Jason, how are you doing today? Good, Adam. How are you? Not too bad. Thanks for being on here today. We also have another extraordinary person, Phil Steiger, who's been on AVA before. How's it going, Phil? Doing great. How are you, Adam? Not too bad. Yeah, we got uh, a lot of uh, all-stars in this particular call here today. <laughs> and I know this topic in particular is um, a bit of a bear of a topic for sure for a lot of people. But um, you guys got some of the best presenters in the office here, here today. And uh, I know Jason in particular might be especially qualified to talk about replication since he himself is a replicated individual as an identical twin. Is that right, Jason? <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Dude, you guys are in for a treat, dude. This guy <laughs> knows Vault and everything about being a twin. So <laughs> we're going to be talking about Vault my multi-site options, so uh, uh, replication, obviously, and some other implications around that kind of architecture and stuff. Uh, so yeah, hang in there, or, you know, I guess strap in or you guys are in for a ride here. All right, cool. Jason, uh, what do you got for us today, man? I know I've personally asked you a lot of questions about multi-site and replication, both before your time at this job and then after your time at this job. But uh, what are we talking about here today? Yeah, so today we're going to talk about, you know, just kind of get into what exactly is, you know, multi-site. What do we, things that we need to consider when we start thinking about how do we get, a, you know, a vault server into another law office and how do we connect them and kind of think about some of the solutions and some of the options. Um, some of you have probably heard about, you know, AVFS servers um, or SQL replication or connected work group. And we're going to talk about the different solutions and, and the pros and cons and really kind of help educate everyone so they can kind of start to think about, you know, um, the options and how they can fit that to their environment and fit that to accommodate their needs and their engineers. And then uh, then we'll kind of do some Q&A. Feel free to um, ask questions in the chat along the way. If not, we can get to them at the end. So a little bit about myself, you know, like I mentioned, my name is Jason Cordelanch. I'm one of the application engineers here at Kativ. I've previously worked at Autodesk and PTC doing technical support um, for PDM solutions. So uh, you're in good hands. Um, and so we'll just kind of start off, start to think about the questions that we should be asking ourselves when we start to think about when it's time to start expanding our vault. You know, do you really need a, a vault server in, in each office? Um, you know, we're definitely going to cover the differences between an AVFS server and full SQL replication and how do we choose between the two and um, and also kind of an easy path to try one out. And, you know, if it doesn't solve all your needs, you know, maybe, yeah, we can, you can always convert an AVFS server to full replication later. Um, and then we'll, it really comes down to performance and we'll get into the specifics a little bit later, but that's things to think about, you know, if, you know, since most of the people on the call only have one vault, you know, if you have users working from home or you have remote office, um, you know, those users, the farther they get away from vault, the, the little bit longer, they're gonna have to wait to download files. It's probably the first place that end users will see performance, especially if you're dealing with, you know, a thousand part um, assemblies or more. Um, the larger the assembly, the, the longer it takes to download those through VPN and stuff like that. And then of course, if you're doing a lot of items or ECO work, um, that requires, you know, a lot of changes to uh, updating the metadata in Vault. Um, and so these kinds of performance issues to think about when we're trying to decide um, when is it time to add another Vault and, and how do we do that? And that's really what we're going to focus on. Um, there's a few assumptions that I, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page, you know. So the Vault server, you know, product design management server is really designed to be, you know, inside your company firewall, um, all these examples, you know, there's no open ports um, to the world. You can only access the vault through, you know, your local network or VPN, things like that. Um, it's also assumed that, you know, all vault servers can resolve each other's host name. And that really helps with uh, file replication, which we'll get in more into that. We're not going to really talk about today about how to access files from outside the network. Um, but if you want to look more into that, you know, shared views, project sync, and VPN connections are definitely 
three ways to, um, to do that. So kind of just make sure that we're all using the same terminology. You know, we have a vault server. So a vault server really has four components. You have the AWS console, which is the application. You have the SQL server, which holds all the metadata. Um, you have IIS, which is a web browser, which all of the communication interacts with. So um, the AWS console connects to the SQL or connects to the vault server through IIS. The vault client goes through IIS. So that's really kind of um, where all the data kind of flows through. And then of course the file store, which is where the checked in data is stored on the remote server. Um, so the real difference between a, you know, a full vault server and an AVFS server is that it has everything except SQL. And so it, it has its own application. It has its own IIS uh, web browser and it, you know, it has its own local copy of the file store, which is super important for, you know, like we were talking about um, before about downloading performance. Um, and so just to kind of give you guys an idea of the icons, because we're going to use some of these and some of the examples. And so um, we can tell, you know, the folders, the file store, the, the worldwide is kind of like a representation of IIS. And then, you know, this uh, silver thing, it's kind of representative of the database. And so this kind of gives us an idea about what these icons kind of represent in terms of does the site have like an AVFS? You know, it has the AVFS application. It has a local copy of the file store, but you know, for the metadata, um, it doesn't have its own copy of SQL. And we'll get in more in depth about that a little bit, but these are kind of the icons that, that we'll be using. Um, and, you know, most people are probably familiar with um, a vault server having the SQL server and vault on the same computer. Um, it's just one of pulling out that um, they don't technically have to be on the same computer, but at this point, because of the size of server um, servers today, there's really no benefit from separating the two because now you're just managing two servers when you can manage in one. If the if the server is properly sized, um, it's very easy to keep them all on the same uh, server, and that's definitely something I would recommend. Um, but it's good to know that that option exists. So, you know, we know that most people start off with one vault, but eventually when you have, um, you know, one remote user, they're connecting to the com company internet through VPN or you have a remote site. So, you know, they're connected through point to point VPN. Um, and that's usually where companies kind of start, you know, one or two remote users. But as that kind of, as you get more users or they're more active users, eventually, they're going to want more performance. And so that's kind of reason why it's good to kind of think about um, an AVFS server because the AVFS server moves the file store to the same office as the end users, which kind of really helps on, on the check-in, check-out performance. And then from there, um, you know, as you need more performance in terms of reading, writing to a database, that's where we can start to think about SQL replication um, because SQL replication gets us uh, a copy of SQL in both locations. And, and for some people, it might make sense to move the vault server into the cloud in terms of, you know, it's still a, a full vault ser or Windows server. It's still this identical setup, but um, that's definitely one option. And we'll explore more on that in terms of having both remote people just connecting to the cloud if the, if the internet's fast enough and the performance is what they need. So just to kind of kind of the you know the advantages of you know having remote users connect through VPN is really you know it, it doesn't change, it doesn't make it any harder to manage. You're still only managing one vault. Obviously, the disadvantages, uh, those remote users are gonna have some slowness compared to the users in the first office or in the same office as the, the vault server. And that's really what kind of starts the conversation to start thinking about, well, what, what can we do? You know, we don't want a user waiting a minute or two to download some files, you know, they'll, the kind of slowness and um, impact to productivity really can start to um, really show. And so that's really the time to start thinking about um, how do we fix that issue? And the AVFS server is great because an AVFS server gets us, you know, a local copy of the entire file store on 
a server at the same office as uh, the other CAD users. And this way, um, sure, you have to, you know, it's one more server to manage. But the nice thing is that it's, um, it allows you to alleviate the need from having to, when you're doing a get now, they can download the file straight from the local AVIFA server if it has it. And then um, during the night or depending on how it's set up, whether it's by night or you know every four hours, um, these two servers will sync the file store. And that way you can you know use um, the network during the nighttime when everyone's at home and you can keep these two servers up to date. And then that way in the morning when a user does a get or tries to check in their work, um, they're only having to communicate with the server in the same office. And so that really changes the, the performance. Um, as some of you may know that have used an AVIF server if you tried to download a file that hasn't been synced yet. So for instance, if a user in Office B checks a file in and um, someone in the first office, they'll see the file. And uh, when they do a get on it, they'll just get a warning that says this file isn't replicated. Do you want to replicate it now? They click yes. And so it will basically, Vault will replicate on demand depending on um, what files the person needs. And so that's uh, a really big benefit so that um, two users on remote connections can share files, but um, they both of them have the same access in terms of, or the similar experience in terms of checking files in and out of Vault. Um, the disadvantage with AVFS servers is because this remote site doesn't have a local copy of the SQL data, um, you know, looking up or assigning files to items or, you know, updating ECOs, engineering change orders, um, those kinds of operations will take a little bit longer because um, that information has to go and read the, the metadata in the database um, and bring it back to the end user. Um, but though that kind of interaction is, uh, is quite small compared to the size of checking in and out large assembly data. And so that's why the AVF server is perfect um, for remote sites um, because it alleviates at least the, the download, the check-in, check-out performance. And if over time you add more users and um, you want a local copy, you know, you, we can always upgrade or convert a AVFS server to, um, to SQL replication. And then, you know, the real advantage is that the both users at both offices will have the same experience. And then Jason, I know when we were discussing this originally, um, can you comment on how, do a lot of our customers do AVFS um, in the first place or the file store application to begin with? Um, it, it really depends on their needs, um, you know, because the real big difference is, you know, by having another, um, by going to a full SQL replication or, you know, it's also referred to as connected work group, um, mm -hmm. is that, you know, it requires another um, SQL license. And so it really comes down to, you know, larger companies that have volume licensing for SQL, you know, it's very easy for them to go straight to SQL replication uh, for smaller customers that don't necessarily already have another SQL license. Sometimes it's easier for them to do the ABFS first. Um, and and I, I think that for most people's needs, the ABFS server is a great way to start because, um, you know, it's a great way to just try it out. And then if you need to, you can always convert it to full SQL, uh, full SQL replication later. And so it's nice to have that kind of flexibility. Yeah, okay, that sounds really good. Yeah, so I mean, the file store replication is still a perfectly valid solution for a lot of users or a lot of companies already, huh? Yeah, absolutely, because you've got to think that's the, the largest um, place in terms of data, you know, the, the when you're updating metadata to the database, that's quite small compared to, you know, 100 yeah, megabytes or, yeah. or 500 megabyte assembly. Exactly. Right. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. Cool. 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 Yeah. Cause that's really where a lot of the time comes. Um, and it really depends on, um, you know, some people have really fast internet at home, uh, their VPN connection to their to their office is is quite quick and you know they don't need an AVFS server but eventually as you add more users and more remote users or at a site or um, it makes sense for that second office you know the that's really where you kind of decide is when 
is when you have more users at that site. And then, you know, that means you have more users downloading these large assemblies across the, the WAN from one office to the other. Um, and by, the AVFS really helps mitigate that and allows the servers to sync the data at night. Um, and that's the, the other thing that I think a lot of people forget about is that when you set up full SQL replication, it, SQL is replicating the changes in the database between both sites, but it's also still doing file replication. And so um, it's, you know, setting up uh, SQL replication does both SQL replication and file replication, um, which is something that sometimes gets over, overlooked. Um, and so I really want to just kind of highlight the differences between SQL replication. And so um, for some of you that know, the SQL replication for Vault 2021 20, and older um, is merge replication. And so the way that merge replication works is you have an ownership. So if I want to um, check out a file, I, you know, this server would have to request um, ownership over it and the ownership would, would be transferred to the subscriber. And then I'm able to do what I want, make my changes. And then when I release it, um, those changes to the local database get synced with uh, the publisher um, and then eventually get populated to any other um, subscribers. And so in merge replication, um, both vault servers have to communicate with each other and maintain this 14 day retention period. Um, and the reason why I bring this up is it's so important is that, you know, if for some reason the internet was out for 14 days, um, that usually doesn't happen. But what usually happens is that if someone changes the password and for some reason these two SQL servers stop communicating, and you get past the 14 days, there's no way to resync these servers. Um, once you get past the 14 days, you have to basically push everything, you know, download what you can, and then basically push all of the data from the publisher back to the subscriber. Um, and so that's something to be mindful of that if you are running uh, Vault with, um, you know, Vault 2021 or older, you're using merge replication. And so it's important to make sure that these two servers stay um, in communication, because if you pass the 14 day period, um, there's no way to undo it. And anything that's been checked in within the 14 days or passed, um, you know, there's a way to, to get some of it, but um, you would lose that data. And so that's why I wanna make sure everyone's aware of that. Um, whereas in, Vault 2022, um, it's been changed to transactional replication. And the nice thing about this is that all writes, so all of the, so it still does the same thing in terms of when you check a file in, um, the file gets saved to the local file store, just like an AVFS server. But the metadata, all of that gets written straight to the database on the publisher. And then as soon as it's written, then all of those changes get synced in one direction back to um, all the subscribers. And this way you have no ownership, you know, you're not waiting for ownership to be changed. And the nice thing about this is that there is no 14 day waiting period in terms of having um, SQL try to um, sync the data. And so this just really starts to make things a lot easier to, to maintain this kind of SQL environment. Um, and kind of reduces some of the overhead it takes to maintain older um, vault replications. So let's go in and, and then, you know, for some, you know, offices, if the, if the connection is fast enough, um, you know, some, offices choose to just move the vault server into the cloud. And what I mean by in the cloud, uh, you know, it's still a, it's a virtual server. It's, you know, full version of Windows. You're still installing a full version of uh, either SQL and installing, you know, the vault server. Um, and so this is another option in terms of the configuration as a way to grow um, if you don't want um, to manage SQL replication um, and have a fast enough connection where you don't need uh, a local AVFS server. Um, this is a way to expand uh, ball access but without having to uh, you know, add a second server. 
And Jason, as many people might not know, we do offer this as a service now for our customers and we host the, their vault server for them. We help them build the tunnel and set them up. And the customers we have operating on it right now have not no, noticed a difference at all than it being in their office. And it takes away the IT responsibility also. Yeah, that's a great point. Cause you're right. You know, that is something that I think is easy to forget about is that, you know, Vault is just like any other uh, IT application. You know, it's not something you just install and then leave it alone. It's something that, you know, like for people that have seen my previous talk on the disaster recovery plan, um, you know, making sure that it, Vault's configured the right way. Um, and then also, you know, making sure that Vault's set up so that it's being used to its fullest. And so this is just another great opportunity to um, consider when you're kind of thinking about um, your vault architecture and, and what is your needs and how many users. And you know, if you want to manage it or have someone else manage it. And so kind of these are kind of like the building blocks for two sites. You know, some companies um, have way more. Uh, needs than just uh, two offices. And so it's nice to know that all of these things can be uh, mixed and matched to suit your need, whether it's, um, you know, Vault uh, SQL replication, you know, having one server in America, one server in Europe, and then ABFS servers for um, remote offices in other states, um, whether it's, you know, purely, you know, it's just SQL replication at all the sites um, and other configurations in terms of using um, remote SQL and a bunch of vault servers with uh, AVF servers. And we'll get into some examples. So, you know, and that's the, the beauty of, of vault is that, you know, we're able to, you know, set these things up and configure them and fit your needs. And, you know, these kinds of projects, you know, sure take a little planning, but it, um, it's very doable to set up replication AVFS servers. You know, these things don't take months, you know, take maybe a week, but the planning, and that's what I think um, a lot of people forget about is that, you know, we have, when, by using Vault, we have this fantastic feature um, that really allows us to grow Vault to fit our needs um, and really kind of fine tune to what, what it is that we want, whether, you know, it's, you know, having two offices replicated, and then maybe we have a remote um, manufacturing site that just needs to view content. And so they're mostly downloading content. Um, and so having an AVFS server, so they have the local files and can just use the vault client to, to view content um, is, a, you know, is one option so that you can have the kind of flexibility. And so the, the nice thing about, um, Replication is that, you know, as your, your needs grow, you can add more and more offices um, and just keep adding more subscribers. And then that way, and it doesn't matter if the, you know, if your office is, you know, a state away or a continent away, as long as the connection, um, the, you know, the connection between those two offices are, are set up in a way, um, you know, Vault really does really quite well in terms of, allowing the servers to communicate, but not having, you know, this way where you have like 14 users and Office B, you know, all of them are, are interacting mostly with the local server. And then the Vault server is sure has to, you know, if you're missing a file has to go and, and look at the other servers. But um, the nice thing is, is that, that by having a local server um, really kind of just allows all the users and users to have the same experience, whether they're connecting to one of the cloud or the local one, it's, it just gives you flexibility to grow um, and, and manage the, the connection. Um, you know, for some users that, that choose not to do SQL replication and um, in the past, it's like you can also connect multiple vault servers to the same remote, um, the same remote SQL server. And then that way you can connect AVFS servers from all your remote offices to the um, to Vault. And this is really um, a setup where you know you start out with you know one 
ser vault server and one remote server. And you know, once you add um, enough AVFS servers to one AVMS server, eventually, you know, you would add another one, and and you could really sp span this to uh, a, a large um, deployment where this could be, you know six or 20 AVFS servers, it just depends on how many remote sites. But the nice thing is that um, all these components are scalable to really kind of fit your need. Um, you know, this is probably uh, a common setup having SQL replication um, for the different geos. And then within the geo have local remote AVFS servers. Um, and then that way, um, everyone's getting the same experience. And if they need to later on, like let's say if you have you know, a lot of users in one remote site that are doing a lot of uh, CAD work, you could always make that remote AVFS server a, um, and, and bring it part of SQL replication. Um, and so that's the, the beauty about having this opportunity is that um, you can grow these things as you need. You don't have to figure out from day one, I need three, you know, remote uh, subscribers, you can always grow it as your business grows, as the amount of users at one location grows. And, you know, you really just kind of use the performance, you know, as, a, as an indicator of when is it time to add an AVFS server, when is it time to upgrade an AVFS server to full um, SQL replication. Um, So kind of just kind of to summarize, so that the advantage of the, of the AVFS servers, you know, is that hourly or, or, or at night, all the AVFS servers will replicate all the files that have been checked in during the day. And that way um, you're not putting a load on the network between two um, or unnecessary load between two offices. You might as well use the internet connection at night when no one else is using it to sync all that data. Um, you know, the disadvantage of the AVS server is that you don't have a local copy of SQL. So you have to wait for all the SQL requests to come across the, the WAN or the wider network. Um, and then for SQL replication, again, SQL replication to SQL replication and file replication. And the, the, the greatest advantage is that, you know, users at the same sites have the same experience in terms of their own copy of SQL, their own local copy of the file store. Um, you know, and I would argue that the biggest advantage, uh, at least in terms of replication to upgrade to Vault 2022 is by changing the replication from merge replication to transactional replication completely changes the need to um, maintain the 14 day retention period. And, and it gets rid of uh, file ownership, which can, for some people that have used that, you know, if the, if the internet goes down between the two sites, um, you know, when it comes back up, it'll merge the, the, the information. Um, the hard part is that if you have users working on one site and users working on it on the publisher and they're not sharing data, um, sometimes it's, if something happens to SQL replication, sometimes it can take a few weeks to notice it because um, if you're not accessing someone else's files, um, it might not be as obvious that it's not doing the, the not replicating the information. And, and so that's the, I think the, the, majors, the major advantage is really is to make it easier to maintain SQL replication by going to transactional replication. Um, as someone that's, that has helped many customers um, rebuild replication after that 14 day period, um, it's, a, it's a challenge that I do not wish on anyone. Um, so if you're using, Currently replication, um, I would definitely, it's definitely worth thinking about as part of your disaster recovery plan of, you know, um, how do you rebuild SQL and, and what are your, your, your steps? And um, it's good to think about that ahead of time because the day that you have to execute that plan is not the day that you wanna be making or figuring out how do you do it. Um, yeah. 
I've been on a few of those calls with you as well. Yeah, it's always, uh, you know, when you ask them, how long has replication been down? And they're like, oh, it's been 21 days. Uh, <laughs> some bad news for everybody. <laughs> like, right. But, um, so, sometimes yeah. we get lucky, but. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, we have we have a few questions here, too, if you don't mind pausing here, uh, sure. Jason. Um, Brian Kelly, um, he's asking about Vault Pro Server 2022. Should I keep it to transactional rather than the merge that we used in Vault Pro 2021? 20, uh, is, is that an option? Do you have to toggle the merge? Uh, do you have to toggle the transactional replication over the regular merge? Is that right? No, it's something that gets changed um, during the, the the when you upgrade. Um, when you upgrade from 2021 to 2022, uh, you basically have to take down replication, and then when um, when to you upgrade, you have to re-enable it. I see. Um, I see. Because merge replication isn't an option in 2022. I see. I see. So it is going to be transactional by default in 2022, Brian. Yeah. And um, it, it sounds like you've had some replication issues in the past too. So hopefully that'll <laughs> prevent that in the future as well. Um, and in a similar vein, someone is asking about the kind of typical length of time for AVFS replication. So. I know you said that the file store stuff happens at night. Is there a general time frame for how long that stuff would normally take? Um, it usually takes, it really depends on the amount of files that have been yeah. checked in during the day, but it's, you know, it, it basically does the same thing that you would be doing if you were checking in. It's just offloading it to, um, to nighttime. I and see. so it's right. a very similar process in terms of the check-in process versus like um, file store replication. It's, it's very similar. And time. I think both bandwidth also between the sites. I see. That, yeah. yeah, the internet connection probably plays the biggest role between how long that takes. Mm -hmm. And it, I've never seen it take two hours. I see the 10 minutes, two hours. It, I was doing 28 sites and I was able to do them all. I had them scheduled a half hour apart and they were all being done within a half hour. We weren't changing that much data. Right, exactly, exactly. So maybe not something you don't have to block out, you know, eight hours to make sure it replicates every night for that, I'm sure. Um, no, and I was even doing it during the day. Oh, yeah, you know? right on. <laughs> because if, if you're only replicating three or four files, you're never going to see any, you know, bandwidth issues for anybody. Right. I mean, there's not a lot of changes going on during the day. That's interesting. And then Brian did have a follow-up comment here. It was set to transactional by default, but when I tried to force it back to merge, it blew up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's a bit of a transition there that needs to happen. And uh, we, we could possibly take that offline if you need help with that, Brian. But um, yeah, stay tuned. Okay. All right. I think that's all I got for the moment, guys. Um, go ahead, Jason. I think you have another slide of summary, I think. Uh, yeah, this slide and then just the call to action. All right on. Okay. Yeah. And so Phil, you had mentioned earlier, um, the whole, you know, storing a, a vault in the cloud is definitely a solution to this kind of multi-site uh, uh, conversation already. And you described our service that we provide for the vault as a service. Do you want to talk a bit more with the slide here? Sure. Um, so we have different levels of support here at Kativ. You know, we do sell, we, we do sell licensing. It's just basic, you know, and then you get into Kativ support, whereas we help you with your desktop uh, applications and issues and product training. But then we get more into people who are having, um, who own Vault and we do Vault support. And then we do, you know, tra uh, tracking of your support. We do your, help you with your Vault configurations and your Vault admin. We also do quarterly uh, maintenances on that. And we are working on a new tool, our vault analytics that we're hoping to roll out here before the end of the year that is a, um, a service that would sit on your vault server and basically always be tracking the vault and making sure that the vault backup was running, uh, making sure you're not low on disk space or if there was any errors going on it's more of a proactive service and it would, it would auto generate an email to you and us if there was a problem so that, you know, hey, we could get on a call, fix your backup. Um, if there was an error that we were seeing happening, you know, because sometimes errors start to happen and you don't experience a problem for three or four days after that error started to generate. Well, if it happens once, let's get on a call. Let's see why that error is happening. We can fix it. So that service, uh, 
is coming soon. And then, like we said, we do have uh, Vault as a service. It's a cloud-hosted solution where we basically host your Vault in the cloud. And you know, Jason was showing a couple of those slides where he had um, multiple uh, regions for replication. And you know, we're working with a couple of customers right now where we're um, looking at doing this full replication from America to, to the Europe and to Asia for them. And then we're just basically creating VPN tunnels down to their offices in those locations for them to use the vault. So, and we're doing all the work for them, you know, managing their vault, making sure the backup's done. We're keeping an eye on that and they're just using vault and taking advantage of all the features of vault. I see we have a, right a question. I'd like to go. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, yeah, and then I think the next slide here is Q and A, right, Jason? Yep. Yeah. So just to round things off, yeah. And so uh, again, there's a lot of different ways to approach, you know, how to manage all your different vaults, right? Especially this multi-site stuff. So definitely, you know, that's the whole reason we have these presentations because we know it's a, it is a complicated topic and a lot of solutions, including some services with us. And so if you guys have any questions, we'd love to take them at the moment. Um, let's see here from. Especially since every customer, you know, have different sites, different configurations, different yeah. needs. It's it's always unique, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right on. Yeah. So yeah, feel free to submit any questions you you guys might have over here. And, uh, and, and yeah, I agree, Brian. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The the whole cloud talk has been, you know, I feel like it's kind of been a a big topic for a long time and it's kind of coming to fruition it seems like more recently where it's a lot more accessible to just get stuff up in the cloud and start coordinating over uh, shared networks like that for sure uh, i didn't realize you used to be with us in the past too right, right on so. and if, if, when you really look at the cost of yeah either you putting it on site and managing it or hosting it in the cloud the roi is you know pretty big for hosting it in the cloud now I mean, because you eliminate IT work and all sorts of other stuff that you're no longer having to do by us hosting it. I know. Okay. And so I don't know if we have any other questions here then, guys. Um, yeah, I'll keep it open for a little bit longer here. But um, I guess any closing comments? I, I always thought replication was kind of hard to wrap my mind around, honestly. And, uh, I like the way that you framed it around kind of user experience, right? Because it's ultimately about, you know, can you get to the stuff that you need in an effective manner, right? <laughs> Whether it's just checking out files for like local looking at and just checking out, or if you need to actually update items and do a bunch of other stuff, and then you go into full replication and stuff. So um, yeah, I guess any other comments you think on this or any last words? Yeah, it's, it's just, I really like that vault is set up in a way that you can you can expand it you can grow it to fit your need and you know whereas you know it's it's very very approachable you know yeah there's the tools already there yeah exactly there. yeah which is super nice to to be able to roll that out and you know you know spend you know a short amount of time and, and whereas you know if it was more complicated you wouldn't do it but it's it's in a, it's set up in a way, you're right, it's already integrated. It uh, makes it very easy to roll it out as you need it. Um, and it's nice because even, you know, when you're inside the Vault client, there's um, there's fields that will show you if the file has been locally replicated or not. And so there's little um, things like that, that once you start using um, an AVFS server or SQL replication, there's little things like that to look out for. Um, so that you know that you're downloading something uh, that you already have a local. Right. Can I add, I, I would like to add something to the whole replication conversation. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, if you're, if, if you're thinking about going to replication, I say you start out with AVFS. I really do. It, don't go full SQL because it's easy to upgrade to full SQL if you need that full replication. Just in my experience, most of the offices that I supported didn't need the full SQL and they ran just fine. But I've, it's a cheaper, easier option to stand up and it's quick than to do right. full replication. Well, and you don't have to buy that other SQL license. 
It's just going to be a big. I see a question came in um, about partial vault replication. Yes, you can do partial vault replication if you have different vaults set up inside a vault, different containers. So if you have business unit A and business unit B set up inside your vault, you could replicate just business unit B to one uh, another office and not uh, business unit A. And in the scenario where I used to work, we had 13 different engineering groups and we were replicating those to different sites all over the country. Yeah, Brian says AVS is so much easier, 10 minutes tops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Goes, yeah. yeah. Could the cloud option be available in Asia? Yes. Uh, I'm working with a company right now that's looking to do uh, US, uh, Europe, Asia, and uh, South America and have it all replicated. What is the cost of moving to the cloud? <laughs> it varies the size, depending on your size of your vault. It, it starts around our basic, if you have a small vault, is around between 9,000 and 9,500 a year. Yeah, and if you guys are curious about any more of, you know, especially pricing information and stuff, I highly recommend you reach out to us uh, after the session as well. We could definitely provide more information on any of that for sure. Um, yeah. And uh, great, great questions. Yeah, absolutely. So again, I, I know this is a you know pretty involved topic, and so and it definitely depends on your individual company. So feel free to reach out if you guys do have any questions. We're happy to discuss any of these topics at length here. Um, I think we are going to cut it here, though, uh, unless there's any other last minute questions that want to come in here. Going once, going twice. All right, cool. Yeah, thanks for being on, Jason. Phil, you guys are always great to be on here, and I'm glad we have some fantastic vault expertise. Um, and yeah, thank you for being on here, the audience as well. Um, stay tuned next week. We'll have more information next time as well. So take care and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you too, Brian. Take care. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.